hello, I'm going to draw a picture. <laughs> uh, I thought, given that this is a rather witch spacey picture, I would read out a little bit of the Robert Holdstock book, The Dark Wheel, that relates to a witch space tunnel. So, uh, here it is. <laughs> the voice of Siscon, which controlled all traffic flow in Lave's orbit space, murmured softly, Avalonia, make a four-minute drive flight to faraway jump point. Understood, Alex called back and adjusted the auto accordingly. His father sat back and smiled, his job done for the moment. Siscon said, Enter faraway jump along channel 27 at 45 Orient. Affirmed, Alex said, and his father rolled the ship along its central axis, ready for the dangerous hyperspace transit. Everything looked good. On the rear monitor, where the planet shone brilliantly as it slowly moved through the heavens, a dark shadow drifted into vision. Another ship, lining up for the faraway jump. It was quite normal. Alex took no notice. More concerned about the impending transit through hyperspace, his father scrutinised the other vessel for a moment, then relaxed. He had no way of knowing he had only 14 minutes left alive. Making a faraway jump in a system as complex and crowded as Lave is no simple business. A hundred eyes are watching you for the slightest mistake. Make a mistake in orbit space, and the next time you go to dock at one of the world's Coriolis space stations, a big not welcome sign might flash in the vacuum before you. Which space? A magic place, a place where the normal rules of the universe don't necessarily work. And every few thousand parsecs along the witch space tunnel, there are monitoring satellites and branch lines and stop points and rescue stations. Passing by all of these are perhaps a hundred channels, a hundred lines for ships to travel, each one protected against the two big dangers of hyperspace travel. Atomic reorganisation and time displacement. As they approached the jump, Alex practised ship identification, a crucial talent in any spacefaring profession. The unarmed, unmanned orbit shuttles were easy enough to spot as they ferried cargo all around the system. He noticed two ASPs, Navy ships small, manoeuvrable and deadly, well protected against attack and with highly advanced military weapon systems. He also saw a single crate, the so-called Star Striker, small one-man ship much favoured by pathfinders and mercenaries. To his right, space docked and still unloading her passengers, was the immense cylindrical mass of an anaconda. A massive freighter that had been adapted to passenger transport was an ugly ship. Its yawning ram scoop gave it the appearance of being a squat, blind creature with its mouth disgustingly agape. The catalogue was endless. Boa-class cruisers, pythons, the bounty hunter's favourite, the further lamps, packed out with weapons and no doubt decked out inside like a palace. Landing craft called worms, mambas, sidewinders, large craft and small, all winking brightly, reflecting sunlight in brilliant blue-grey sheens. They say that witch space is haunted. Maybe that's why they call it witch. Time turns all around and atoms turn inside out and gravity waves billow up and things move there. Life forms, or shadows, or atoms, or galaxies, who knows? No one has ever stopped and gone outside to find out. Only robot remotes exist there. Switching stations, monitors, rescue droids and the like. Whatever lives in which space, in the faraway tunnels, will remain a mystery always. But there are ghosts there. The ghosts of the early ships that went into faraway and didn't come out again. Ghosts. And shadows. The shadow of a snake. A cobra rising over them. Trapped in which space, there was nothing he could do to outmanoeuvre the other vessel. Alex watched the shadow of the Cobra, well equipped, a fuel scoop, missile silos, extra cargo holds, a squat dome of an energy bomb housing, rich ship indeed, and a deadly one. The small ship veered and strained as he looped it in an escape run, activating its ECM as the Cobra launched a wave of missiles. Put on a remlock and get to the escape pod. Do it! It happened so fast then, afterwards Alex was uncertain as to exactly what had happened. The duelling ships span and circled in towards the planet. Space around them blazed silently as their weapons struck and were deflected. 
In the same moment of the Avalonia's death, Alex Ryder found himself being struck by his father, the Remlock mass forced into place around his eyes, nose and mouth, his whole body physically manhandled into the escape pod. The ship shuddered and screamed. Fuel spilled into the void. I don't understand. Who's trying to kill us? Raxler, his father said. Remember, Raxler. And he pushed Alex into the cramped escape pod. It's a ghost world, a planet, a legend. So Rexler's a really popular concept in the game at the moment. Everyone loves a bit of it. Uh, there's lots of uh, groups doing stuff to try and find it and lots of little avenues being explored. So I guess uh, the frameshift drive is the tool used to create the Witch Space Tunnel now. This is uh, some years later in the story of the game. They've developed it. It's better. It's not using the same Korean fuel, I think it was. They they based it loosely on an existing concept called the Alcubierre drive, which may or may not be a possibility. Um, so the idea of the the hyperspace jump, where you're you're moving space around the ship so that you're travelling faster than light. So especially if you're near a neutron star, which allows you to then scoop magically. <laughs> Scoop the jet cone of the pulse of the pulsar to uh, fill your tank with a little bit more than the capacity because I don't know whether it's super dense star power, but yeah, that allows you to go a lot further. I know it's quite it's it's a little bit it's a little bit magic, but I still really enjoy the visuals of the hyperspace tunnel as it's created slightly different for the larger vessels you know that the uh, the capital ships still use the original witch space cloud and um, the thargoids have their own method and they look a little bit like the witch space cloud as well the new fleet carriers have that that lightning effect of the cloud as well it's the the little jumps we do in our little spaceships they're quite controlled and we can hop all over the place anyway uh Thank you for listening and watching. I think that's done.